The live broadcast of IOF high-level events is the best opportunity for the whole orienteering community to show off their sport. It's also the best possible way for the viewers to experience the extraordinary performances of the top athletes in one of the toughest endurance sports. The live broadcast from a large sport event is made by a production company. They are the host broadcaster and send the international feed to the different rights holding companies, such as TV networks. These networks then add in their own commentators and other content and distribute the programme to their viewers. Like in the rest of the organising process, a successful TV production of orienteering is a complex operation which requires both production crew and organisers to cooperate and understand each other's needs. A big part of the work is completed in the planning phase, for instance by designing where the camera controls are placed at specific distances around the course. This makes it possible to calculate when the athletes will show up to the controls and will create interesting and dynamic filmed sequences. A World Championships or World Cup race is usually covered by somewhere between 10 and 20 cameras which are connected to the control room, or OB truck as it's called. This connection can be made by various technical solutions, but optical fibre is the most common as the length of cable can be almost unlimited, with the image quality still unimpaired. On a normal orienteering production, it's not unusual that the total length of all camera cables exceeds 20 kilometres. The rigging of fibre cables is usually done the day before a race. This is an area where local organisers might be very helpful, with transportation, helping hands and general access. One of the key factors of successful TV operation is cable safety. Organisers should work together with a production company to plan cable layout properly. Every cable drop or road crossing must be planned and landowners should be contacted in advance. Problems might be caused by, for example, lawn cutting. In urban areas, every door should be checked and every house landlord contacted to agree with cable lays. On race day, broadcasting companies might choose to either let their commentators sit at their home studio or be at the arena. If the commentators are present on site, there should be commentary positions with a good view over the arena as well as monitors provided by the production company. The commentary position should be a good shelter in case of difficult weather conditions, whether that's direct sun, wind or rain. The organisers should also offer all commentators services like race maps and updated start lists with late changes. At the arena, the host broadcaster should have precedence of the best camera angles, even though it's usually fully possible to design an arena that meets the wishes from other photographers as well. It's important to understand the fact that international live signal might reach millions of viewers, so arena layouts and branding should be made carefully. After each race, a flower ceremony is conducted within the broadcast slot time and therefore it's important that the organisers help the director with keeping the time schedule. You can find more detailed information about this in the documents WOC and World Cup Media Guidelines and TV Host Broadcasters Manual on the Communication and Media section at orienteering.sport.